Shalom. First and foremost, we're going to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And today, uh, basically, I wanted to get into Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, uh, which is a very beautiful chapter, you know, speaking. You know, on the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, you know, because people get it twisted and think that the Messiah somehow only showed up in the New Testament. But he's spoken of all throughout. OK, the Old Testament, he's spoken of in the law, the prophets. OK, the Psalms. OK, he's written in the volume of the book. As a matter of fact, we'll start at the book of Hebrews, chapter I believe it's 10 and around the eighth verse which quotes the psalm okay so I'll start at 6 this is Hebrews 10 and 6 it says in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure you see because Israel all right, we we ultimately uh, overdid it with the sacrifice. The Heavenly Father was fed up with our abuse of that system. All right. So in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou has no pleasure. OK. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. You see that? Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Okay? And as we're going to figure out in this chapter, all right, uh, even in Egypt, okay, we can't forget that it was an angel that the Heavenly Father sent, okay, in his name to lead Israel, okay, and to win, uh, uh, do wondrous works, you know, the parting of the Red Sea, you know, the, the you know, uh, the taking down the enemies that inhabited the land, you know, that strength was given from the Most High through his angel, the angel of his presence, okay, who sits at the right hand side, who comes in the volume of the book. You see, from start to finish, it's about him. Okay, doing the will of his father, all right, uh, uh, Yahweh. Okay, now we're going to start here in Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, in the first verse. Okay, now you can see the blue letter. They even understand that this is end time prophecy. But somehow this has slipped past you Christians. Okay, God's vengeance on the nations. Okay, and how is he going to avenge the nations? By his right hand. OK. To take down all of the heathen rulerships, OK, and to, to pay them back, OK, for what they have done to his chosen people. So it says, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra, which this is all symbolic. This is speaking of how Yahweh will return. On one hand, it's showing you that the Messiah is going to return to an Edomite ruled all right, power structure. Okay, when you get Revelation, okay, the 12th chapter, it tells you the accuser of our brethren will be cast down, okay, right before the kingdom of heaven and salvation came, all right, which is in line with 2nd Edges 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, okay? Because also when you get Isaiah the 34th chapter, Okay, and we'll just hit the point, you know, speaking of, you know, the war that ends wars. All right. You know, World War Three, you know, the nations being gathered over in the Middle East, you know, um, you know, at that very time is when the Lord is going to send his only begotten son back, you know, as missiles are being shot over here to Babylon, the great, you know, for the great destruction that is written of, you know, in many scriptures. See if we can pull that up here in Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Give me one second. All right. 
This is Isaiah 34. All right. <laughs> Another God's wrath against nations. All right. But who's the nation that will be in rulership when the Most High, you know, sets his judgment? The Edomites. Okay. Which cuts the doctrine that the Edomites have been done away with. Because there is a daughter of Babylon. Okay. Written of in the Holy Scriptures that will rule in end time. Well, what nation of people would run that daughter of Babylon? Clearly, it's the Edomites. Okay. This is Isaiah 34 and 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll. All right. Nuclear war. Okay. And all the host shall fall down as the leaf falleth from off the vine. As the falling from a fig from the fig tree. You can read that same narrative in Revelation the sixth chapter. Which is clearly end time prophecy. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. All right. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood and is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra in a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. OK, and as you read down, this is ultimately all right. Verse eight. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of the recompenses of the controversy of Zion. OK, and it goes into how Babylon the Great will be desolate. OK, which, of course, we know in Psalms 137, the daughter of Babylon is linked directly to Esau Edom. OK, so as we read here, OK, in Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that coming from Edom? All right. In one sense, it's speaking of how the, the heavenly father's son, when he returns, he's going to destroy Babylon the Great. All right. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a lot of bloodshed and he's going to take down the whole power structure of the Edomites. OK. And it's going to be a lot of blood, bloodshed. OK. Now. That's what it's speaking of in one sense, but in another sense, it's also speaking of, you know, how he will return and from what region of the earth he will return. All right. Uh, uh, from. All right. How he's going to come. What region of the earth. OK. And how do we know now? When the most high sent his only begotten son. All right. To deliver the law, statutes and commandments to Israel. OK, he came from Edom. As a matter of fact, let's get that in uh, Deuteronomy 33. All right. Which was uh, Moses's, you know, final words before his death. It's likened unto a song as well. All right. Um, Deuteronomy 33 and one and said, this is the blessing where with Moses, the man of the most high. All right blessed the children of Israel before his death and he said Yahweh came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them you see and this is speaking of the area where the chariots entered you know into the atmosphere to bring the children of Israel the law you see via an angel and we're going to show you that it says he shined forth from Mount Paran and he came with ten thousands of saints from his right hand. OK, from the most high's right hand went a fiery law for them. All right. And when you get the story. OK. This is uh, Exodus 13 and 21. And Yahweh went before them. All right. By day in a pillar of cloud. OK. To lead them. All right. The way. All right. It says. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and, and night. And he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day for the pillar of fire by night. All right. Nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. OK. And when you go to the uh, 14th chapter, Exodus 14 and 19 and the angel of the most high went which went before the camp of Israel. See, there was an angel 
removed and went behind them and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them so the pillar okay the angel that was sent okay to uh you know pretty much be a guide unto the israelites even in uh exodus 23 and 20 what does it say all right this is for the israelites you know um in egypt you know it was the mediator it says behold i send an angel before thee to keep thee in a way and bring thee into the place which i have pre pre prepared beware of him and obey his voice provoke him not for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him All right so ultimately you know our salvation lies in in him okay and it's the angel sent by the most high all right it's still of the most high but this is how he did it this is how he led the israelites you know uh, uh out of egypt all right uh through the wilderness and so forth man and did mighty works all right via moses aaron okay and 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 other things man so when you deal with isaiah's 63rd chapter when yahawashai returns all right He's going to come, you know, from the clouds, but it's going to be the same exact entrance. And, here, and we're going to prove it. Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? All right. And that's Yahawashai that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Okay. And what is the greatness of his strength? Okay. Those chariots. As a matter of fact, when you get Isaiah the 47 chapter real quick. Okay, Isaiah 47 and 3, speaking to the daughter of Babylon, which is the kingdom that will rule on earth when Yahawashai returns as well. All right, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. So he's not, he's not going to meet you as a man. He's going to meet you as an angelic force traveling all right in the glorious all right in his glorious apparel which is those chariots you know like jake loves to show off their cars and to think that you know that apparel is glorious the shoes well yahweh is going to return in his father's vehicles the chariots all right along with uh, <laughs> a, a whole heap of a host of other angels man in their order to do his will okay so let's go to habakkuk real quick Okay, uh, chapter 3 and 1, it says, A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shiganoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. So the Lord has given him a vision of how he's going to return and destroy the Edomites and take down the heathen nations. Okay, and send the chariots. You see, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. And that's ultimately what we want. We want him to bring the wrath, but we also need that mercy. And that mercy is going to be through that angel, you see, which is Yahawashai. Okay, and we're going to show you all of that. It says, God came from Teman, you see, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. That means those chariots are going to come, you see. And it's going to come from that same way, from Teman, okay, which is in Seir. You see, God came from Teman. As a matter of fact, let's look up Teman, okay? All right. Uh, uh, ta. Uh, ta. Yam, ta. Yam, uh, man, okay? It says uh, South. Let's see here a region i'll just get to the point because it's, it's a eliphaz you know the tribe descendant noted for the wisdom all right but it says uh the region occupied by the descendants uh of one located east of idumia so it's from that same region you know uh you know south which is even close to the land that judah was given it's in that same region from those chairs they're going to return just as they uh came you know in Deuteronomy, all right, uh, as Moses uh, described it, you know, from that same 
area. So the chariots are going to come, okay, and cover the, the, the heavens with his presence. You see, and when you go down, verse 8, it says, Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? All right, was thine anger against the rivers? Because he's seeing his vision of the earth in terror, right? Was thy wrath against the sea? That thou didst ride upon thine horses and thine chariots of salvation? Like, are you mad at the sea? So when we go back to Isaiah 63, okay, this is how Yahweh Shah is returning. You know, this time, all right, unto praise for the elect to deliver us and put the laws in our inward part this time, as opposed to writing it on stone. This time he's going to beam us up into those glorious chariots and change our bodies, man. Okay, we're going to be brought into those glorious uh, chariots. So let's go again. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Okay. This that is glorious in his apparel. Okay. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. You see that? Mighty to save. Okay. The one that's doing this is mighty to save. Okay. And the question comes, wherefore out thou, art thou red in thine apparel? All right, and this is symbolic of the the the, the blood, okay, that is going to be shed, okay, when Hamashiach Yahweh returns, okay. He, he's going to take down these nations. You see, wherefore are thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in wine fat? And you know this can directly be linked to Revelation the nineteenth chapter, man. Okay, uh, the the marriage of the lamb. Okay, the coming of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai in verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, okay, and behold a white horse. Now heaven is, the, the heavens are open for the chariots to enter into this, this, this realm. You see, and behold a white horse, which is a chariot. Horses are symbolic of power. As the scriptures say, the hiding of his power is in those chariots. Okay. And we're going to be well acquainted with that power when we, we be beamed up and changed, man. Because we can't take this flesh up there. Okay? And behold, a white horse, pure. And he that set up on him was called faithful and true. And that's Shahawashai. Okay? And in righteousness doth he judge and make war. That's what Shai is coming back to do. This is what who you all call Christ, which that just means anointed one. We don't use that term. Okay, Hamashiach, you know, the Messiah, the anointed one. Okay, the, 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 the uh, Lion of Judah, as the scripture call him, which he's tracked throughout the whole scriptures. He's prophesied, he's tracked, he's spoken of throughout the whole scriptures, man. So he's coming back as an angelic force in the chariots. Okay, and in righteousness does he judge and make war. So this is a righteous judge here. And he's coming to make war with you heathen, man. Because there's going to be war on the earth. So he's going to come to bring more war. And he's going to bring the pain. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Okay. And on his head were many crowns. Okay. And what do those many crowns represent? That represents an ancient custom. All right. Where when a king took down another king. Okay. Uh, uh, you would take his crown. Okay, I believe when David slew Goliath, he went and took his crown off of his head, you see? And that's an ancient custom, meaning you took down that kingdom. Well, when Yahweh returns, the government of uh, the throne of David, okay, you know, before it's established on the earth, the Lord is going to take these heathen down. He's going to destroy Babylon the Great with a big bang. All right, that great millstone, as it speaks of in Revelation, the 18th chapter. Okay, he's going to destroy Babylon, a great, and then take down all of the powers that be. Everything's going to be in disarray. All right, and in Revelation, the ninth chapter tells you these, these elite are going to be hiding in the bunkers. Okay, so he's coming to judge and make war, and his eyes were as the flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. You see? So he's going to take down all of you heathen. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And when you go to that word name in the Greek, okay, 
is, is ultimately dealing with his rank. He's the only one to fulfill this. Okay? He has a rank. No, no other angel in heaven, no man on earth was given the rank he was given. He's the only one that can fulfill the volume of the book and the things that are written. Okay? Is under his, he's given dominion under the Most High. He's the Son of God. Okay? It says... And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, chariots clothed in fine linen, white and clean, man. You see? And out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and that he should rule them with the rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. You see? So this is speaking of the second coming of Yahawashai. See, reading two again. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in wine fat? Where is all of this blood? Why, why is all of this? I'm seeing all this blood in this vision. Here's the answer. I have trodden the wine press alone and of the people there was none with me. Because when Yahawashai returns, what is, what is he coming to do? All right. Let's get that in uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter. All right, Matthew the twenty fourth chapter. Okay, in the uh, the uh, thirty first verse, it says, "And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to another." Okay, so as he's making war, all right, on this earth, and 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 you know, sending fire, and you know, there's World War Three, and all hell breaking loose on the earth. The elect are going to be beamed up out of here. Okay, that's why it's likened into a second Passover because we're going to be passed over. This time we all get beamed up. You see, <laughs> it says, um, it says, I have treaded the wine press alone. All right, hold up. I have treaded the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. Because this is the anti-Messiah. Remember, this is where the Most High Son, His image, this image of His Son, the image of the true Israelites, the judge, the judges of the earth were covered. Okay, so the, the people, none of these people are with Yahweh Bashem Okay, and and that's and that's why they're going to be worthy of judgment. You see, harsh judgment, man. And the armies on the earth are going to be fighting back and forth. There's going to be a lot of bloodshed. It's going to be a very terroristic <laughs> terror. It's going to be very, very powerful and crazy. That's the, that's the best way you can describe it. It says, for I will tread them in mine anger. You see, because he was X'd out and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my raiment. So he's letting them know. The reason you see all of this blood is because I'm going to take these nations down in my fury and trample them. You see, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart. You see, Yahweh cannot wait to do this. As, the, as he even said, I, I, I will. That it were already kindled. All right. As a matter of fact, let's find that. Okay. see maybe it's in uh i know maybe it's in matthew or luke oh yeah this is luke 12 and 49 i am come to send fire on earth and what will i if it were be already kindled but i have a baptism all right to be baptized with and how am i straightened until it be accomplished this is Shai speaking all right but he 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 wishes he can bring that fire now, but he had to go through what he had to go through. He had to come as a, a humble lamb and be a sacrifice. All right. But don't get it twisted. He's he's not coming back that same way, lowly on an ass. This time he's gonna be riding a chariot. See, he rode a mule, you know, just like Solomon, okay, into Jerusalem, you know, when he came. But this time, you know, he, he's coming, you know, with a with a <laughs> With a whole nother uh, uh, mindset. Okay. The, the NLT. I have come to set the world on fire. And I wish it were already burning. 
<laughs> yeah, I wish I wasn't for this world, man. So the day of vengeance is in his heart, you see, and the year of my redeemed is come. And uh, that's the Israelites. And I looked and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me and my fury. It upheld me. You see, as he says in Isaiah, the 59th chapter, as a matter of fact, let's get that. Okay, because that's the only way we're going to get out of the grip of, you know, the uh, powers that be, you know, in the elite. You know, ultimately, it's going to take the Heavenly Father sending an angelic force. You see, and, 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 and taking their asses down. This is uh, Isaiah 59. Okay, and. Uh, 15. It says, Yea, truth felleth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And Yahweh saw it, and it displeased him. All right. That there was no judgment. You see, that's why Yahweh Shah is coming in righteousness to judge and make war. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. All right, as the law says, all right, no man shall save you in the in the uh, curses. No man would be able to redeem us back to the most high. OK, it would have to be, uh, uh, you know, his only begotten son. And he's not going to return as a man in the flesh this time. He's coming with that heavenly body, you know, to beam us up. You see, he's going to be our into he, he is our intercessor. And somehow you have, you know, New Testament bashing Israelites acting as if there was never a mediator and that there it was just only the most high. Going to scriptures that they have no idea how to understand as if, yes, the most high is, is the savior. OK, but how he saves is written all throughout the scriptures. He even sent men as saviors. That's Nehemiah, the uh, ninth chapter in the 27th verse. He sent them saviors to deliver them. Well, how are we going to be delivered out of this crazy, you know, uh, uh, situation, man? OK, the devil ruling is going to be through Yahawashai. You see? When you depart from evil, you make yourself a prey. So the Lord, the Lord has to somehow end this because we would eventually be swallowed up. You see, therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness. It sustained him. So his holy arm, his right hand, even in the, uh, the Exodus, it talks about the right hand giving him the victory. So his 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 right arm, his right hand is going to bring salvation unto him. You see, and it's speaking of the son of the most high man. So going back to Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. OK. In the fifth verse, it says, and I looked and there was none to help. You know, he looked upon the chosen people. You see, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me in my fury and upheld me because he's going to take down these heathen. Remember, these heathen are on the earth trying to figure out a way to blot out the name of Israel. See. <laughs> Verse seven, it says God's ancient mercies recall, man. You see, and that's what we have to do. We have to tap into that energy, you know, th that our forefathers were in to be delivered man and miraculous things happen i will mention the love kindness of yahweh and the praise of yahweh according to all that yahweh have bestowed upon us and the great goodness towards the house of yasha allah israel because it's always about israel man all right which he have bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his love kindness man and we we hope to receive of that mercy because we're in need of it okay i don't care how much money you got i don't care what position you may be in if you're an israelite you need salvation man okay we need to get the hell up out of here so we need the lord to remember that and that's why we're likening to zion which means monument okay or parched place all right where that water will be poured man all right. It says, for he said, surely they are my people. 
all right children that will not lie so he was their savior and this is gonna this is speaking of the remnant because you know this the the, the mass majority of our people are a bunch of damn liars so let's get this in the book of zephaniah the third chapter okay in the 12th verse it says it says a remnant of israel it says i will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people we're afflicted and poor all right but what and they shall trust in the name of the lord see they're they're, they're afflicted and poor but they trust in the name of yahweh that's the remnant in these latter days a the remnant of israel shall do no iniquity nor speak lies neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth okay that's 100 percent truth man for they shall feed and lie down and none shall make them afraid okay they're going to be a protected sheep all right sing o daughter of zion shout o israel be glad rejoice with all the heart o daughter of jerusalem okay man the yahweh have taken away thy judgment he have cast down thine enemy the king of israel even yahweh is in the midst of thee thou shalt not see evil anymore man and that's going to come through yahweh shai <laughs> You see, as the scriptures say, the most high at, at his right hand shall strike through kings. See, and his right hand is absolutely tenacious, man. It's going to move mountains. See, he's going to crush the teeth of the wicked. So he said, verse eight, for surely he said, surely they are my people. OK, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. OK, because we stood for what was right. No gal was found in our mouths. It's not about the flesh, but it's about the spirit. You see, justified from the beginning of the world. OK, to, to be blameless, as the scriptures say. OK, it says in all their affliction, he was afflicted. He hated to see what we what we were going through, but he's bound to his word. You see, now it pleased him to bruise us. But ultimately, uh, 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 when you deal with it, he said, he that touches you touch, you know, have touched the apple of my eye. So within the story, there's a fury to those who put, you know, uh, hell and oppress the children of Israel, man. Look what happened to uh, Pharaoh. All right. In Egypt, the firstborn. So in all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. Uh oh, the angel of his presence saved save them you see in his love in his pity he redeemed them you see <laughs> Woo. and he bare them and carried them all the days of old man so a lot of you like to act as if when you deal with the you know the exodus there wasn't the existence of a of an angel who was sent to save the children of israel <laughs> and like we're just making up some idol to 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 worship and and bow to all right as if even abraham didn't have to go through melchizedek you see but all of you are getting ready to be destroyed man you see the angel of his presence is going to save them you see let's get isaiah 19 Isaiah the 19th chapter okay and the uh, 19th verse and that day sh there should be an altar unto the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof unto the Yahweh okay and that's here in this spiritual Egypt where we're making our bodies a living sacrifice and it shall be for a sign and a witness unto Yahweh all right the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt for they shall cry unto Yahweh because of the oppressors and he shall send them a savior and a great one and he shall deliver them so that savior is going to be sent all right but it's through the authority of the most high god yahweh okay so in in all their affliction he was afflicted he's going to hear that cry okay and the angel of his presence saved them and in his love and in his pity he redeemed them and bear them and carry them all the days of old you see and that's what happened in egypt all right but what happened
but they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. You see, therefore he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. Okay, in the wilderness. You see? Then remembered, all right, he, the days of old, Moses and his people saying, where is he that brought them up out of the, the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? And where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? Woo! You see, he brought Israel out of the, the sea with the shepherd of his flock. Now, when you go to that story, let's get it, Deuteronomy you know, the, uh, or Exodus, the 15th chapter, you know, <laughs> when, when, you know, the angel, you know, worked miraculous works, man, but it was his right hand. All right. Let's see here. This is that song, Exodus 15, then sang Moses and the children of Israel, this song, which we go sing this song. When we're beamed up on those chariots and spake saying, I will sing unto the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. <laughs> and who's the horse and rider in this time? Esau. Okay. Esau, because Yahweh Shah is returning to take down. All right. The, 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 the horse and his rider in this time, as a matter of fact, revelation, the sixth chapter, Okay. Revelation 6 and 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that sat thereupon. You see, some uh, someone sat on that horse. You see, to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. This is Esau's blessing. Okay. He took peace from the earth. Nothing but war going on. And there was given unto him a great sword. He's coming in spirit of Cain, right? But it's a red horse and someone riding on it. So that same horse now runs this spiritual Egypt, you see? But when you go down to the point, verse 6, Exodus 15 and 6, Thy right hand, O Yahweh, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Yahweh, have dashed in pieces the enemies. And that's Yahawashah who sits at the right hand. Okay, we can just type in right hand. Okay, Yahawashah. I want to get the one in Hebrews. Hebrews, I believe. It's like. Uh, Salakia. Let's see. Yeah, yep. Hebrews 1 and 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he have himself purged our sins, sat down on a right hand of majesty on high. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Hey, when Stephen was stoned, what did he say? And he said, behold, the, the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. See that? <laughs> so Yahweh is at the right hand. But even in the, in, 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 in the story of Egypt, we forget that there was an angel sent. Okay. And in the song of Moses, that angel is likened unto the right hand of the Lord. Okay, so, you know, the, 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 the scriptures, okay, and he's the good shepherd. You see, he, where is he that brought them out of the sea, all right, with the shepherd of his flock, the most high, you see, and the shepherd of his flock is Jehoshaphat. You see, where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him, that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm? See, dividing the water before them 
to make himself an everlasting name. That's the God we want. See, that's the power we need. All right. That led them through the deep as in horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble. And that was that light by day. OK, that pillar of fire by night. You see. That angel <laughs> and that angel is going to be sent. OK, in these times to deliver us in an even greater fashion. All right. That's why the scriptures say as birds flying, so shall the Lord defend Jerusalem passing over it. He will preserve them. And that's that remnant. And passing over is the second Passover out of Egypt, a spiritual Egypt, which in this Egypt, we're in the hands of the, 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 the sickest nation on the planet Earth, the Edomites. Who are in their blessing with the sword. Okay, passing all sorts of wicked legislation, lying. Okay, and they're trying to bring that thing. We got to get the hell up out of here, man. That led them, verse 13, through the deep as in horse in the wilderness that he should not stumble. You see? As a beast goeth down into the valley, the spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So thou didst lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Okay, and that was in that, 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 uh, uh, you know, that old Egypt. Okay, but, you know, when, when you look at it, you know, in this new Egypt, as you go, let, let's go to Revelation 11. Okay, Revelation, the 11th chapter, it talks about how our dead bodies would be in a, in a, in a great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, where Yahawashai was X'd out crucified right but when you go down to it you know after three days and a half we raised up in that spiritual egypt okay and when you go to verse 12 you know the spirit of life from the most high entered to us all right via his right hand and verse 12 says and they heard a great voice from heaven saying come up hither and they ascended up into heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them so we're going to be delivered out of this new egypt Okay, by Yahawashai. See, the, 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 the Savior. All right? The Savior of the nation of Israel, man. Now, we're at verse 15, and we'll end it on out. It says, you are our father. It says, look down from heaven and behold the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and the strength? The sounding bows and the mercies towards me, are they restrained? And we feel like that at times. We're like, damn. Like, are you, are you, you know, you know, hey, pluck, pluck it. As a matter of fact, let me get this scripture real quick. Man. This is the book of Psalms 74 and 11. While, why withdrawest thou thine hand, even thine right hand? Pluck it out of thy uh, bosom. For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. Thou didst divide the sea by strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters, which was Pharaoh at that time. Okay. Now, what did it, what did it say? Why withdrawest thou thy right hand? Okay. Pluck it out of thy bosom. Bring it. You know? Hey, bring it, man. We, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, lock it, but, you know, please. You know? We read about all of these great things. Hey, and we're, you know, Lord willing, you know, we're even worthy to, to, to but we want to see, you know, the, the standard. We want to see this place be destroyed, but we understand that we have to be patient and that prophecy has to play out. You see? O oh, Yahweh, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? You see, and you can get Romans, the eighth chapter. It answers that, man. We were made subject to vanity, all right, for, for the purpose ultimately of the story to be fulfilled. You see, it says, return for thy servant's sake the tribes of thine inheritance, the Israelites. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. We've only had 40 years of peace, <laughs> you know, as a sovereign government, you know, on the earth. 
See, 40 years while these heathen have had hundreds of years, you know. I mean, close to thousands at times. I mean, come on, man. Return for thy servant's sake, the tribes of thine inheritance, the people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little. You see, while our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary, Jerusalem will be in the hands of the heathen, as the scriptures say. Okay? Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine. Thou never bears rule over them. They were not called by thy name. And that's speaking of the heathen who would be in rulership before the Lord sent his son. You can even get that in Daniel, the seventh chapter. Okay. The Lord. Okay. Let's see it low. The Lord is going to send his son back to ultimately smash. All right. The uh, opposition, man. And to smash down these beasts. You see. The ancient of days reigns. Verse 7 through 12. And the son of man is presented. Okay, to set up a kingdom and visions, all right, and dominion and glory where all king kingdoms and people and nations and languages should serve him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion. That's under Yahawashai, who is going to establish the throne of David, and we're going to rule out of Jerusalem. So with that, hopefully I'll edify it on to the next one. Shalom.